Yeah, I, I went to uh, I went to Thailand like two years ago, two summers ago. It was right at the uh, end of my um, amateur career, and um, I want to experience Thailand and get a real feel for like Muay Thai and just you know live amongst the people as one of them. So I traveled to uh, Thailand at the end of July, and I stayed five weeks, and I left like six, around like September 17th, and I came back, and it changed my life. The it changed my life, and it changed the way I thought about life, and it changed the whole uh, the core values I had about life and family and what's really important. Uh, I went over there. I, I just saw like I saw all this tourist stuff, and I'm like. I, I like I don't like that. Like that isn't real Thailand. Like those aren't real Thai people. Like I want to go to like the nitty gritty, like the poor the slum areas. So that's where I essentially come from. And um, when I got there, like I like it was kind of hard because like everyone smiled, everyone was nice. And you know where I come from, the people that smile and are nice, like oh you know how you doing, you know those people that stab you in the back. So I thought it was something wrong. Like, you no, know, like. No one's this happy living this like horrible, you know, in the condition they live in. No one's this happy. And uh, as I start to uh, venture out on my own, I start to uh, go to the slums, you know. Like I understood, and I watched the kids, and I watched how they interacted. It, it, it changed me. Just seeing like the little kids, the little poor kids that that play around and they play in the street, they play soccer in the street and everything. And I, I would play with them, and I uh, got to know some of them, and I would ask them and stuff like, like you know, like. What do you guys do? Like, what do you guys want to do? Like, ask them about their about the self and ask them a little bit about the like, talk culture and stuff. And they started explaining to me and everything. And um, one one thing uh one of the kids said was like, oh, you know, if you're a dark tie, they know you're poor. Because rich ties, they they not in the sun. They don't do manual labor. And I just thought in my head like, fuck, like this this is real, you know. And then um. Like uh, the kids that have so much confidence. Like here I am. I, I essentially think I got everything. Like, I got some money. I got like I'm wearing like Nikes and I'm wearing Jordans and shit, the retros. And I'm thinking I got something. And essentially, I really had nothing. And I found out like materialism is just a sign of insecurity. Because when I take away like the money, or I take away like the, the materialistic stuff I have. Who am I? What am I? Am I going to have the same attitude? Am I going to have that same confidence? Like, like all that stuff didn't really mean nothing to these kids because these kids, ragtag, poor, they don't care. They got a smile on their face. They're happy. You can't tell them anything about themselves because they love themselves. And that's true happiness. That's true confidence. They're welcome and talk to anybody. They, they didn't have in their head like, oh, I got to have this or I got to be all I gotta be all presentable. I gotta be in some type of designer clothes. I gotta look like this. I gotta look like that. But they didn't care. Like they, they would walk up and they would talk to anybody with that same confidence and that same energy. And here I am thinking I got everything, you know. And I don't got nothing compared to what they got. And then and then like family, man. They they really embrace their family, man. They love their family, man. Everything they do is essentially for them, for their family, and for that next generation that's to come after them. So they they always work hard, man. And one of the things that uh, one of the kurus always tell me, he always tells something a little like like this one little kid that would, these couple of little kids that would like play around the gym and train at the gym and stuff. They would they would always tell him like, you know, I want to be world champion. I want to be this. I want to be that. And the kuru, the kuru will always say, he always say, up to you, up to you. Whatever you want to be is up to you. You can control your own destiny. You can you can control your own success. And that's one of the things that really stuck to me, man. It's when he, he always tell them, it's up to you. It's up to you. You got to work hard if you want something. And then I, like I, I asked the kids, like, man, like, they always wear sandals and flip-flops and stuff. And some of the sandals were, like, too small and stuff. And here I am over there. I got, like, six pair of shoes. I brought a whole bunch of clothes and stuff. And I'm thinking in my head, like, I don't I, I don't need this stuff, man. I don't want this stuff anymore. Like this stuff, it don't mean nothing, you know. Like I'm I'm happy with myself, you know, I'm happy with what I got. And so I just I, I gave away all 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 six pair of shoes. I only kept a pair of shoes just to train in, and that was it. I gave them all away. The and it it made me feel good inside because uh, like some of the kids like twelve years old, thirteen years old, like 
they never had like a nice pair of shoes. They never had like like no Nikes and no retro Jordans and stuff like that. So I was just happy just to get that stuff away, man, and put a smile on some kid's face because they they gave me more than I could give them at that point. So I was happy about that. And then um and then like the mindset, like the mindset of the type of, like they work hard. They work hard every day. Some even like on Sunday it's supposed to be their rest day, but some of them they still working hard, man. And they work hard every day. And they don't complain. They don't whine. They don't wince anything. They just work. And I I really just I embraced it, man. I loved it, man. I came back with you know, that same mindset and that same energy, man. Like I like I don't buy like a lot of shoes and a lot of clothes and I don't put value in that stuff, man. I truly don't. And then like when I first got there, <laughs> like, like I went to the night market. Like, I'm like, oh I mean I'm gonna buy this, I'm buy that, I'm buy this, I'm buy that, buy everything. And then uh my friend Charlie was like, I'm gonna tell you, you don't need this stuff, man. Why are you buying this stuff, man? Do you really want this stuff, or are you just buying this stuff because you can buy it, man? Don't waste your money, man. Like, put the stuff back, man. It's all right to look at stuff, man. You know, you know you can have it. You know you can afford to have it. You, you don't need to have this stuff, man. And they tell me, and he just told me, like, man, buy stuff you need, man. If you don't need it, man, don't buy it, man. And it it just it just changed me, man. I was truly indebted to those people, man. Hopefully, when I go back, man. This summer or maybe this winter, if I get a a break in between fights, you know, I'll go back there. I would like to go back there and see some of those kids, man, because those kids are great, man. Kumute Radio is brought to you by Supplement Warfare. Go to supplementwarfare.com.au for all the best supplements on the planet. Use coupon code Kumute Radio at checkout to get 10% off all orders.